Hi and welcome to Worlds Apart, a program that is committed to speaking the truth in love. I'm your host, Romul Gosain, and today we have with us Jay Smith, who will be speaking to us about ideologies that are worlds apart. Mm. Hi and welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. As we've been going through these episodes, we've been speaking about a number of different topics. Mm. Now, the last episode, we were able to actually check out the facts concerning the Quran. Is it truly a fact that, you know, what was recited originally has been handed down, it's still preserved? And as we discuss some of these things, you were able to show us that there were actually some alarming differences. And in fact, what we have now perhaps isn't what was originally recited to the prophet. Now, the accusation is often made also to uh, Bible believers that the manuscripts, the texts which were used to translate the Bible, uh, the many different translations that we have now, uh, that they were not preserved. There are so many different manuscripts. What are, what are some of the answers to those accusations? Yeah, and the, the, let's go into that and let's look at it. We looked, last time we looked and we asked, are the manuscripts preserved for this book? And the answer is categorically no. Uh, there are fragments from the seventh century. Uh, they don't even agree with each other because there's uh, what we call palimpsests of writings above and writings below. We're separating. We're seeing that they even there, there's an evolution in the text. The earliest manuscript that is now available, uh, that has not been made available, but certainly mm -hmm. the Yemeni government does have, the Sana manuscript, uh, it is quite different than the Quran that we have today. And uh, to be fair, when, when you ask, do we have the original manuscripts of the Bible, the answer is absolutely no. We don't have the original manuscripts of the, either the Old or the New Testament because it's so old. Now, that's why we need to be careful what we claim as Christians. We don't have the original manuscripts any more than the Muslims don't have the original manuscripts for the Quran. But there's no reason not to have the original manuscript of the Quran. Because, hmm. listen, as we're going to see, the manuscript evidence we do have for the Bible is much, much older than the Quran. And what's more, it's much greater in number. Now, let's just look at the Bible and let's just ask this. Manuscript evidence, Old Testament, no, because the Old Testament is 3,400 years uh, going back to the Mosaic period. Uh, the Pentateuch is 3,400 years ago. So we would not expect to have any of the originals. So, you know, we believe that, you know, Moses wrote the first five books of the Bibles, the prophets, you know, the Psalms, David, and so on. Yeah. We don't have the original, what we they would not actually expect to have those Because yes. that's much, much too old. Uh -huh. Let's talk about the New Testament, because that's really where the Muslims are confronting us with. And that's a good, a good question. And so, not only Muslims, secular scholars are asking this too. Do we have enough that would support and substantiate the authenticity for the New Testament yes. documents? You might want to ask, okay, let's, 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 do, let's do three things. Let's not, not just look at the manuscript evidence. We can do that. Let's look and see when they were written down. Hmm. Uh, because that's another big claim that they say, we're not even sure the books that are there are the ones that should be there. Uh, for instance, why is it the Gospel of Judas is not there? Hmm. Uh, why is it the Gospel of Barnabas is not there? Uh, why is the Gospel of Thomas probably the most popular gospel that secular scholars like to look at? Well, very quickly, you can see very quickly why they're not included in the New Testament, the 27 books of the New Testament, because they're all written much, much too late. The Gospel of Thomas, the most popular one, uh, you can see it, it, it borrows many Syriac idiomatic expressions, much of them taken from Tatian's Diatessaron, which was written in the late 2nd century. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it had to have been written after the 2nd century, much, much too late to be Thomas, because Thomas died in the 1st century. Uh, the Gospel of Barnabas that Muslims like to point at us. Look at the Gospel of Barnabas, goodness sakes. Why do they point to it? Well, they think that that's really the original Gospel, and because it talks about Muhammad. And it refers to ah, Jesus okay, basically see. coming and pointing to Muhammad. Uh -huh. But the Gospel of Barnabas was first, uh, the first and earliest manuscript we have is written in Spanish. It's mm. there in the, uh, the Vatican Library. They now have it. It um, mentions that Jesus made water into wine and then put the wine in casks. Casks were only invented to, co to carry wine in the 10th century. Mm. So how could Jesus, how could anybody have known about casts 
in the first century when mm-hmm. Barnabas was living. Mm-hmm. It says that Nazareth is on the Sea of Galilee and Capernaum is up in the mountains. That's now, wrong. Barnabas, who had lived in Israel, would have known it's the other way around. Mm, he would not have made wrong. a mistake Clearly like that. Wrong, yes. But what's probably most telling is it mentions that the year of Jubilee is every hundred years. Now, ah, we know in the Bible it's not. It's 50, every 50 yes. years. But there was a time when it was a hundred years, and that was during the time of Pope Boniface II ah. in the 1300s. Mm-hmm. So it looks like whoever was writing the Gospel of Barnabas was a convert to Islam from mm. Spain, probably a monk, Mm-hmm. who was living under Pope Boniface II, and so he was writing at the time that he was mm. referring to, which places it in 1300 AD, Makes much, sense. much too late yes. to be, uh, to be um, adequate. The Gospel of Judas is another one they like to point to. It's unfortunate that those who make these claims don't go back to the early church fathers. Irenaeus, the early church father in the late 2nd century, he confronted the Gospel of Judas. He said, this cannot be written by Judas. Judas died the same year our Lord Jesus Christ died in 33 AD. And he was writing in 180 AD. Unless Judas lived for 150 years after that, he would be a very old man. To say nothing of the fact that he had never died. So that's been eradicated. It was eradicated back in the 2nd century. Why are even scholars bringing that up today? And why are Muslims, shame on them for bringing that up as possibilities? Hmm. We know that all all the three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, were written before 60 AD. We know that John would have been written much later, about 80 or 90 AD. We know that Acts and also uh, the letters of Paul were written within 15 to 30 years of Christ's death. So all the three Gospels, Acts, Revelation, all the Paul's letters were all written before the disciples left Jerusalem in 70 AD. That's mm. important because all the eyewitnesses were still there to corroborate or dispute. Why 70 AD? Well, 70 AD is when Jerusalem was destroyed Mm -hmm. and the Christian church and the Jews had to flee. And and once they fled, of course, by that time, there would have been no eyewitnesses left in Jerusalem to corroborate. Mm. And they would have mentioned it, surely, such a significant event like that, had it happened, they would have mentioned it. Well, this is why in the book of Acts, there's enormous events that are not written in the book of Acts, like the death of James, the brother of Jesus, in 62 AD, the death of Paul in 64 AD, the execution of Peter in 65 AD when he was crucified upside down, Mm. the insurrection by the Jews in 66 AD, or the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. None of these are recorded in the book of Acts because the book of Acts was finished before these events happened, Mm. which means the book of Acts had to be written before 62 AD. That's why the Gospels, all of which were written, except for John, were written before the book of Acts, would have all had to be written within 30 to 40 years. That's what's important. Now, Mm. what about the Quran? The Quran, we've already said the last segment, does not have that. We don't even know when it was written. It looks like it could have evolved over a period of 50 to 60, maybe even as much as 100 years. We got that from the last time we talked. Let's talk about the Bible. Let's ask What manuscripts do we have? Hmm. Well, we have the John Bottomer Papyrus, which is portion of the book of John from the second century. We also have the John Rylands manuscripts, which again are uh, parts of the book of John, the Gospel of John from the second century that's there in England. If you go across the waters over into Ireland, you get to Dublin, you get the Chester Beatty manuscripts, you have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all four Gospels. You also have the book of Acts and Revelation from the third century. That's uh, that's within 200 years after Christ's death. And then you come to London. I love living in London because in (laughs) London we have the British Library, the British Library, we have the Sinaiticus, Mm. the entire New Testament, all 27 books from the 4th century. That's 300 years before the Quran. You can go look at the Sinaiticus. It's there. It's on public display. We do not hide it. We do not. uh, In fact, it's up on the internet. You can look at page after page. Every one of its pages is on the internet. So no one's trying to run away from it. We've done study on it. It is dated to 325 AD. Mm. Within 300 years of Christ's death, we have the entire New Testament. Right next to it in the glass cabinet is the Alexandrinus, which is the entire New and Old Testament from the 5th century. If you were to go down to Rome, you get the, the, uh, you get the Vaticanus. The Vaticanus is, again, the entire New Testament from the 4th century. So we have the three great metropolitan codices, the Sinaiticus, the Vaticanus, and the Alexandrinus, all from the 4th and 5th century. That's two to 300 years before the Quran. Hmm. We can show the entire New Testament. Why can't the Muslims come up with one manuscript of their Quran from the 7th century? Hmm. Now, that's not all we have. We've got 5,300 Greek manuscripts. We've got 10,000 Latin Vulgates. We've got another 9,000 in other languages. You add all that up from the New Testament, we have over 24,000 manuscripts. Wow, still in existence. Can you see why we have no problem with our manuscript evidence? Mm. Now, you you might have to say, are they all early? No, there's only 230 of them that predate the 6th century. Mm -hmm. But that's all before the Quran. And it's those 230 that men like Bruce Bruce Metzger and F.F. Bruce have spent their whole career studying. And now that they have been come out with their studies, they have spent their entire career studying these 200 manuscripts. And they now say that 99.9% 
of the New Testament is accurate. Mm. We have no doubt. So that shows, I mean, that they didn't come later. They were original. They did come from the times of the apostles or, mm. you know, the early writings of the prophets and so on. However, are there differences? I think that that's the question that we're okay, trying to get, get to. Before we get to the differences, okay. we have something better, even better than the manuscripts yet. All right. I'm what's just that? getting into this. Okay. Come on, hold on with me here. Stay with me here because we're going to go and show you some other material that's above and beyond the manuscript evidence that Muslims don't know about yet. Look at the translations. We've got 19,800 translations in 11 different languages. Hmm. That means 19,800 from that we start to appear from the second century on. Wow. That's why we have the Ethiopic, we have the Aramaic, uh, we've got the Greek translations, we've got all kinds of different uh, archaic language translations, and the list goes on and on and on. When you look at these 11 different languages, if we had wanted to corrupt it, as Muslims say we had, we'd have to go to every one of those 19,800 <laughs> translations in all 11 languages and no one know about it. Hmm. Now, what's a bigger miracle? Yeah, that's right. Then we have the lectionaries. 2,000. What are the lectionaries? 135. The early church, they would re do liturgy. They would recite liturgy in the church services. Uh -huh. And they would just basically recite the text from the Bible mm. in their liturgy. And those have been written down. And we have 2,135 of them from the 6th century alone. That's 100 years before the Quran. Wow. We can look at them. They all agree with the manuscript evidence. They all agree with the translations, all 19,000 of them. They all agree. And that's why Muslims need to be careful when they say we have corrupted. But you know what? I'm saving the best to last. What's that? We've got what are you something hiding? better than, than all of that. We've got something better than anything I've said so far. What is it? You want to know, don't you? Yes, definitely. And I know the people on the screen want to know as well. <laughs> well, in the early church, almost immediately, as soon as these well, writings were written down, as soon as Math, Mark, and Luke, and then John later on, as soon as Paul's letters were written down, they were then sent out in the diaspora. They're sent out to the different churches in the diaspora. And they were, of course, being read in the churches. People were converting into those churches, and some of the people that were converting did not like what they were hearing. The docetists, the monarchists, they didn't like the idea that God could die or that God could have a son. Mm. Uh, you had the Gnostics, the Gnostics who did not believe God should take on bodily form, that God must just come and that we get salvation through gnosis, through knowledge. We don't need a man, God who becomes a man. And so they just start disputing with the gospel accounts. The early church fathers had to do something with these disputes and they had to come up with some type of defense. So the early church fathers started writing letters. Mm -hmm. Now, what they did was very clever, and this is where I think God was in this. This is why I love God. He knew that this was going to be a question that came out in the 21st century. What the early church fathers did, they could have just disputed it using debates, could have just philosophically debated the issue. They didn't do that. What they would do in their letters, they would just write verse after verse mm. after verse to support everything that these act, to support or to defend against all these accusations. Verses out of Jack, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts any of Paul's letters, any of the references from the New Testament. And they would then send these letters all over the known world of that time. Now, two men in the last century, one named Sir David Dalrymple and the other Dr. Jean Bergan, these two men have spent their whole life going all over the world, amalgamating all these what we call early church fathers quotations, quotations of the biblical text. And guess how many they come up with? How many? 86,000. Wow. They have found 86,000 quotations from the early church father's letters. Wow. They went one step further. They wanted to find out, Dr. Jean Bergon wanted to find out how many of these quotations predated the 4th century. Mm -hmm. How many of them predated the Sinaiticus that we have in the British Library, the Alexandrinus that we have in the British Library, the Vaticanus that is in Rome. How many of these predated the Council of Nicaea when many Muslims claim that's when our Bible was put together <laughs> in 325 by Constantine? So he just looked at those quotations that predate the 4th century. People like Ignatius, Irenaeus, Pappus, uh, people like Polycarp, Athanasius. These are the earliest church fathers. Mm. Just looking at their quotations, guess how many quotations he came up with? I don't know how many. 36,000. Wow. 36,000 quotations all predating the 4th century. That's 300 years before the Quran. They wanted to go one step further. They wanted to see how much of the New Testament these early church fathers' quotations incorporated. So they put them in chronological order from Matthew all the way to Revelation. And guess what they found? What they happened? found with just these 36,000 quotations from before the 4th century, they could reproduce the entire New Testament except for 11 verses. Ooh, two, 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 two. Wow. I hope you're surprised. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is away, great yeah. news. Because stop and think the significance of what I've just said. Yeah. They could reproduce all 27 books of the New Testament. All of them. Just through the correspondence, the letters just to each other. Just from these quotations. Wow. From before the 4th century, 
except for 11 verses, 11 insignificant verses. Mm. Now show me any piece of literature, secular or sacred, that can make that claim. Mm. Look at all the great secular pieces that we have to use. If you study the classics, you have to study the great, uh, you need a great study, the great uh, historians like Herodotus, Thucydides, who writing in the fifth century BC, you have to study the great philosophers, like the Greek philosophers, Socrates, Plato, uh, any of these, Aristotle, any of these great uh, Greek philosophers, uh, who are writing in the 4th and 3rd century BC. If you want to look at history again from the time of Christ, you need to really look at Caesar's letters, you need to look at Josephus, Thallus, Tacitus that we mentioned earlier in another segment. All these historians writing in the 1st and 2nd century, looking at Pliny who is writing in the uh, beginning of the 2nd century. Any of these writings in history or philosophy, everybody believes they're correct, right? Mm. Guess when the earliest copy we have for any of those writings is? When? Not till 850 AD. We have nothing earlier than the 9th century for mm. any of those writings, historical or, uh, or philosophical. Nothing uh -huh. before 850 AD. Yet no one questions them. Mm. No one says we should not trust them. No one suggests that there's been a manipulation or there's been a corruption in any of those texts. You can't do the classics today without reading them. Yet the Bible, the New Testament, the 27 books of the New Testament, we can trace right back to the second century and we have the entire manuscript evidence by the fourth century. That's 500 years before the first secular manuscript of any of the historians or the philosophers come into existence. And that's 300 years before the first Quran, supposedly, oh. according to Muslims, come into existence. We know that's not true. Now, stop and ask yourself, what that tells me is just by looking at the early church fathers' quotations from before the fourth century, the fact that we can reproduce all 27 books. Now remember, this is outside of the manuscript evidence. It's totally separate from the manuscript evidence. It's separate from the traditions. It's separate from the lectionaries. Yet it corroborates all the other three. Hmm. Completely different set of uh, uh, vehicle that we can look at. Which means we can throw away the manuscripts, throw them all away. Who cares? Hmm. Throw all 26, 24,000 of them away. We don't need them. Look, at, throw away all the 19,800 translations. We don't need any of them. Throw away all 2,135 lectionaries. We don't need any of them. And we can still reproduce the entire New Testament, except for 11 verses, just by looking at the early church quotations. Oh, I love my Bible. That's amazing. Isn't that great? Yeah. So you, Muslims dare not say that anymore. Hmm. Now, Muslims will say, yes, but you have corrupted. And here's what I do. Whenever they say we've corrupted our scripture, I ask them two simple words. Where and when. Mm. If they say it happened before the 7th century, which Muslims always say, if it happens before the 7th century, then I give them five verses to there to look up. And I want Muslims, if you're watching this, I want you to look at these five verses. Write these down on a, on a piece of paper right now. Surah 10, Ayah 94. Surah 21, Ayah 7. Both these verses say, if you Muslims have any questions, go to the Taurat in the Injil, for they are signs for you. They are basically, uh, they will answer your questions. Surah 29, Ayah 46. Do not argue with the Christians, for they have been given the Taurat in the Injil for you. You're not to argue with us on this. Isn't that great? Your Quran tells you not to argue. Surah 4, Ayah 136. O Muslims, that's you. Go to those scriptures God has given you from beforehand, the Taurat in the Injil, for they are signs for you. And then Surah 5, Ayah 46 and 47, and Ayah 6, 8, 68 comes back to us and says, O Christians, go to those scriptures God has given you. That's us. We're to come back to our own scripture. We're to come back to our own text for their signs for us. So I've just given five references for you Muslims now. Go in the Quran, read them, look and see if that's not what the Quran tells you. Your Quran tells you over and over again to go back to those scriptures, to come back to our text, to come back to our New Testament, because they are signs for you. Now, here's the second thing I'm going to ask you. Show me one scripture, show me one verse in the Quran that says my Bible has been corrupted. That's what I was just about to ask you. It's in 29 amazing. years, I've asked that. In it's not there? In 29 years, I've asked that. Surely it would be there. I mean, it's, it's one of the fundamental teachings. Surah 2, Ayah 79 is what Muslims will go to. I'm going to read it to you right now. Okay. This is the only text that they can go to. Surah 2, Ayah 79 says this. And if you have it in front of you, you can use it, read as well. And I encourage those of you at home to do that if you have a Quran. Surah 2, Ayah 79 says this. Then woe to those who write the book with their own hands and then say, this is from Allah, to purchase with it a little price. Woe to them for what their hands have written and woe to them for that they earn. That seemed to suggest that somebody has written something with their own hand and is calling it hmm. the book. See, and many Muslims say, see, this shows, because hmm. this is talking about the Jews. We know that because look at this previous verse. You need to go back to that previous verse. You need to go back to verse 78 and see what it says. And there are among them, the Jews, unlettered people. So now what does that say right there? Unlettered people, 
who know not the book. Mm. Who know not the book. Okay. So there, there are unbel- certain Jews who are unlettered. That means that they are not. Uh, they, they are unbelievers. Well, not to, no, no. Unlettered okay. means that they are not educated. Ah, illiterate. Illiterate. Much, not yeah. illiterate. Not educated. Okay. They're not. They could, they could read and write, but they're just not. They just don't know the book. Okay. Who know not the book, but they trust upon false desires and they but guess. Mm. That's referring to the seventh century because this is that in the present continuous. So be careful of those Jews here now, Muhammad's, uh, well, actually it is Muhammad, isn't it? The Quran is saying, be careful of those Jews who don't know the book. They don't know the scriptures. That's what the book is, the kitab. They don't know the book. They are unlettered. That means they're not, they're not very clever. They're not very educated. They would guess. Then you put verse 79. Then woe to those who write the book with their own hands and then say, this is from Allah. Be careful of those who write it and then say, this is from Allah. What is it referring to? Mm. It seems to me that it's suggesting that don't just go to any Jew. You've got to go to particular Jews who actually know the book. Is that right? Well, it's actually talking about some writings. I mean, this is talking about writings written by Jews. Okay. So what writing was written by Jews that's not the book? The apocryphal writings. Uh-huh. These are the well-known the apocryphal okay, writings. The I whole see. Talmud. The Talmud is full of these apocryphal writings. Any Jew knows who these are about these ato- apocryphal writings. Mm. These are popular. You can go to almost any library and read them. So it's saying, whoa, be careful of these Jews who write with their own hand. They know not the book. They call it the book. They say, assume these are the book. Now stop and ask yourself, Look at the Quran. There are story after story in the Quran of stories of people we know. Stories like Surah 5, Ayah 31 and 32, the story of Cain and Abel. Hmm. But it's not the story we read in our Bible. No? No. Cain kills his brother. Abel doesn't know what to do with the body. He sees a raven scratching in the ground, burying its partner, so he decides to follow the example of the raven. Is that in your Bible? No. Not at all. It's not in my Bible. <laughs> Surah 21. I have 51 to 71 is the story of Abraham. Gets up in the middle of the night, takes a big idol and smashes all the smaller idols. Next day, the people wake up, they see it, they get angry with Abraham, they take him, they put him in a fiery pit. Is that in your Bible? No, certainly not. It's not in my Bible either. Mm. Surah 29, Ayah 17 to 44. Surah 29, Ayah 17 to 44 is the story of, of, of Solomon and Sheba. I'm sorry, it's Surah 27, Ayah 17 to 44. And Surah 27, it's the story of Solomon and Sheba. And there is Solomon. He's marching his birds, getting them ready for battle. Uh, and then they fly up over the enemy and they drop stones on the enemy. And the bottom of the stone is the, uh, the name of the person they're going to kill. He's the first air force ever invented by Solomon, according to the Quran. One day he's, he's marching his birds. He notices that the hoopoe bird's missing, his favorite bird. He gets angry. I mean, he looks to the south and he sees it flying and it lands at his feet and talks to him. He talks to birds and is saying, there's a gorgeous queen down in the south. He's got to go see her. Well, he's so busy marching his birds, he doesn't have time. So he sends the hoopoe bird back down to the south to bring that queen up, which it does. It flaps on back down to Sheba, lands in front of the queen of Sheba, talks to her. She talks to birds as well. Mm-hmm. And says, you must come on up to Jerusalem to see this great king. So she comes with her whole retinue, comes into the throne room. Solomon's sitting on his throne. She comes at the door at the, uh, to the throne room. As she's about ready to cross, she notices by looking down that what she thinks is water. It's a mirror. She mm. doesn't have that technology in Sheba. She thinks it's water, so she picks up her skirt. And that's where the story ends in verse 44. Is that story in your Bible? Certainly not. It's an engaging story, isn't it? That's right. So where are these stories from? I don't know. These are what we call the apocryphal writings. Okay. These are Talmudic traditions. Mm. Surah 5, Ayah 31, comes from the Talmud of Jeneth, John ben Uzziah. John ben Uzziah is a apocryphal writing written in the 2nd century. Mm. Surah 21, Ayah 51 to 71, the story of Abraham, comes from the 2nd Talmud of Rabbah. Again, a 2nd century apocryphal writing, Jewish apocryphal writing. Surah 27, Ayah 17 to 44, the story of Shalom and Sheba, is from the second Talmud of Esther. Oh, wow. This is nothing more than apocryphal writings. Mm. So Surah 2, Ayah 79 and 78, is warning about these very apocryphal writings that are in the Quran. Ooh, tu, 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 tu. <laughs> it's a self-indictment. Mm. It's actually accusing itself. Mm. It's saying, do not believe that these things that are written by people with their own hand who do not know the book. Mm-hmm. It's warning them about these apocryphal writings. Now, where do you find these apocryphal writings? In the Quran, Mm -hmm. not in the Bible, Mm -hmm. not in the Bible. So Muslims, if you say we have corrupted our scriptures, just look at the manuscript evidence we have. Just look at the translations. Look at the enormous amount of not only lectionaries, but look at the quotations. Oh, goodness, 36,000, all of which corroborate the manuscript evidence. We don't have apocryphal writings here. There's not one. Thank God we have done our homework. Mm. I think God knew that this was going to be a controversy. And that's why I think he purposely had the early church fathers write every one of these verses down. 
so that all 27 books could be recreated, reproduced in a complete different genre so that when that question came up, and it is a good question that Muslims are asking us, when that came up, we can go back and we can be proud of our Bible. We have not corrupted it. We have not changed it. We have not deleted it. We have not accreted it. We have not done anything to it. We have written and could preserve that which God had inspired on the early church fathers. I'm sorry, on the early apostles and certainly mm. the disciples. Now, that cannot be said about the Quran. Mm. You can see now, it is full of these apocryphal writings. That's why it's so much of the Quran has been borrowed. And we can go into a whole nother talk just looking at mm. the borrowings that are in this Quran. I mean, that's really tough, but also for a Muslim in the sense that they, they can't question now. You're asking them to question the Quran. That, that's a real big step for them. Actually, they... I'm actually quoting the Quran itself saying, beware, do not accept these writings. And what it's saying is beware of the very writings in the, the book it's, that it's found. Mm. So in some ways, it's self-criticism. Yes. Muslims yes. need to be careful about criticizing our Bible. They need to first be critical of their Quran. Mm -hmm. What's showing, what this shows me, Rommel, is this is a book written by men, borrowed from many sources, not by God. This does not come from heaven. It is not uncreated. It is full of creations. Mm -hmm. We know many times who wrote it, when it was written, why it was written, where it was written. This book, we make no problems. We know it was written by men. We make that claim from the very beginning. We know who wrote them. The man's names are usually given to the books. John mm -hmm. was written by John, Matthew by Matthew, Mark by Mark. But we know that Moses wrote the first five books. What we do say is that which is written, we can trust. Because mm. we can trace it right back, certainly for the New Testament, right to the, right to the original manuscripts. That's right. Thank God that we can go back to those manuscripts. Now be careful. Original, no, but yes, certainly we have so much corroboration to support those manuscripts. Mm. Thank you once again for sharing some of your insights with us. And if I could just add a little bit onto that, I mean, we do say that uh, men have written these letters or these books, but we always say that the author is who? Oh, it's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. And, and I suppose that's a distinction that we make. And, and anyone that approaches the Bible would have to approach it in a spiritual sense in order to be able to understand because it's the Holy Spirit that would illuminate someone's understanding to be able to understand this great and this holy book. Absolutely. Thank you once again. And uh, if I can just turn to our audience now and say to them, we pray and hope that you have found this episode to be informative. Please stay in tune for the very next episode. Goodbye. Thank you.